So I'm Josh West. I'm the features editor from Games TM Magazine. Um, apparently these slides look okay. It turns out even though I've been writing for 10 years, I can't use Keynote or PowerPoint or anything, so it's a bit of a disaster, so I apologize in advance. Um, basically this talk is basically on how you can make a journalist care about your video game, which basically any talk I go to, whether it be at EGX, Gamescom, something like Rest, is like the number one question. I was literally hanging out with some guys from Killing Floor 2, and they were like, screw the indie guys, how can we make journalists care about our game? It's coming out on PS4 Pro. I was like, oh, okay. Well, like, <laughs> so fine, you know, so like, it is a problem because obviously there are thousands of people making games. There are only a few publications making sure your game is covered. It's actually quite easy to get your game noticed when you know how. So I'm going to just go over some like general house rules for interaction with the journalist, then some rules of engagement, and then three steps for success. So I guess first thing to know is that nowadays we don't actually, we're not all corrupt, okay? The internet and some self journalists will have the thing that we are, but honestly, the amount of just general like tat we get sent is more of a discouragement. Like t-shirts with really bad logos on them. I get like tins of mints. I get pens. Like once, I think it was Deadly Premonition, they sent us some like really cheap coffee with the logo branded on the side of it. I don't want that. Like, you know, it's like I'm not gonna cover your game because you send me some stuff that you've manufactured. Same with like even like gearbox. You sent me this big box of like Battleborn figures. That doesn't stop your game from being a 6 out of 10, it just means now there's more stuff cluttering my desk, so I don't <laughs> really want it. What you're better off doing is take, if you're lucky enough to have a production budget, spend that money on advertising, spend it on something useful. Don't waste your time sending me stuff, because honestly, if you send me a t-shirt, the best I'm going to do is sleep in it in the winter, because sometimes they're quite comfy and oversized to me, because I'm very skinny. Um, <laughs> We aren't all lazy, even if it seems like we are. Like, I know a lot of you, if you're indie devs, like, send us relentless emails, and we probably don't get back to you. And it's because we're quite busy. Like, I mean, maybe it's a rarity for me. I work in print still. There's two of us manning a 100-page magazine, of which I write about half of it. So that's about ten to 15,000 words a week. So it gets quite busy, so we're looking for things that really draw our attention, really want to, you know, make us want to write about it, essentially. And we'll get onto that later. Um, and basically, I hate receiving new emails because it means I have more work to do. I literally get in the morning, I have a hundred emails from like the eight hours that I'm not looking at my email account, and most of them go in the bin, and again, we'll see why in a minute. And as indie devs, or devs in general, you should probably look at me as the enemy, because you spend all of your time making something, and then you want me to write about it, and I don't. That's because I'm a bad, bad man with no time, <laughs> so I'm really sorry, I apologize in advance. So, first rule of engagement, don't be that person, don't be that guy, okay? You don't want to be the subject of a story when I meet up with some of my journalist friends, I'm like, dude, guess what happened to me yesterday? I'm literally, today, had someone find my phone number on the internet and was ringing me constantly about why I'm not covering their match three game. I don't want to write about it because you keep ringing me, but there's like a, dis a difference between being persistent and being annoying. Send one email, if I miss it, send another one. Maybe reach out over Twitter like once. Don't just harass people though, because it gets extremely frustrating. And if you send me a message that I don't like or something that I don't think is acceptable, I'm not only not going to cover your game, I'm going to make sure other people don't as well. It's rude. <laughs> Uh, for example, this is legitimately something that someone sent me over Twitter. For starters, I write for a magazine that couldn't be any further from a blog, so the, like, the lack of research is baffling. But like, this dude is never getting his game covered in print ever again. I don't know whether it was worth it. Perhaps I should make my DMs not open. But, you know, that's on me. Um, I guess the second rule, uh, I hate this. And I know a lot of people do as well because we get so many emails. If you think your email is a high priority, it probably isn't. 
do not tag it as such. It is literally the most frustrating thing in the world to wake up and find lines of red exclamation marks. <laughs> like, I hate it. And it's like, you know, a high, the one high priority email I received in my entire four years I've been at TM was my editor emailing me to say that Fallout 4 code had come in early. If I wanted to come in while I was on holiday, I could come and get it. That's high priority. <laughs> um, other things, like this is real, again, basic stuff. But if you're going to send out a mass email, do not CC in every single person in the games industry because it's embarrassing for everybody involved. It's just like BCC them at the very least. Um, and also, if you are going to send out a mass email, don't label it to one publication. Like, I'm not BG247 or Eurogamer, and it just looks like you haven't put the effort in, which is a shame. Um, but yeah, basically, if I see that, yeah, straight away. <laughs> no, no dramas, going straight in there. Um, but yeah, so like, I guess the step one, really, for me, is if you want me to pay attention to your game, spend more time building your email than you're making a cup of coffee in the morning. You spend tens of hundreds, if not thousands of hours building your game, put the same consideration into your emails because that is the difference between somebody not seeing it and literally the entire industry seeing it. Um, you know, if you're lucky enough, like something like Undertale or Stardew Valley where Twitch picks it up, perfect, you're made with that press. But we are still the gatekeepers to an extent. So really think about your emails because I would imagine 80% of the ones I receive are just block text for like days and it's impossible to read and I get bored very quickly as does everyone. It makes me quite sad in my heart to be honest. Um, and again, difference with like, you need text, you need images, we'll get into this in a bit. Um, this is why I'm bad at slides, these are really poorly managed. But um, you basically want to strike a balance of information, images, without overloading people. I think using Twitter is a really good learning tool that forces you to use 140 characters. Yes, that sounds right. 140 characters to convey everything you need to. So take that same learn, like learning and information to your email. Um, because if you can convey everything you need to in a short space, like short span of time, I'm more likely to read it, and more likely then to cover the game in the magazine or online. I mean, this is an example. There is so much text. This is actually like includes every single thing I could ever want. It's got information. It's got developer quote. It's got like links to screenshots and pricing. But it's just so boring. I don't want to read that. Like I see that, I think, nope. I've got other things to do. There is a better way to go about doing this, and sadly, this is just copy and paste, job done. It could be much better. So really, when I said we weren't lazy, that was actually a lie, because we are really lazy. Um, basically, journalists need you to make it as easy as physically possible to cover their games, so create a press kit. Like I, so I've recently done some stuff for a book publisher called Scholastic. We're doing some like uh, game books for kids, basically. Um, that one of them is for mobile games. Oh, easy. Go to iOS, see what like the coolest racing games are, for example. Oh, cool. Go to the websites. No screenshots. No press kit. No artwork. The screenshots that were there had like text written all over them because that's how you sell games on the you know the app store is you tell people how to play it. But that's no good if I'm publishing the images in a book. And if you're going to take a week to get back to me with those images, it's too late. I had to go with something else because print publishing. You know, we have to turn it around quickly. Same with the screenshots, videos, GIFs. If you can get those in the email, literally perfect, especially GIFs. You can get like a low, like, goddamn file size GIF in there that just shows me how the game looks and plays in action. I'm ready to go. I'm like <laughs> jumping in the CMS. I'm already typing it. I don't even know what it's called yet. Um, so that stuff's great. Um, basically, just you want to have everything ready to go. As I said, you've spent so much time making your game. Don't waste your opportunity. Like this is the first time that anybody's going to see it when you email it out to press. Don't squander that because you couldn't be bothered to put a screenshot in an email or have gifts or anything ready to go. Like any press that want to cover your game, they really do want everything there if possible. So this was a great email I received. Not only is the guy like super polite, he's like the nicest person that's ever emailed me, I think. But this had everything I needed it to have. So you know, you've got really short. I mean, that was like. 300 words, it's got a bio for the game, it's got a link to the Steam store so I could just download it straight away. Everything I could want, all of their links, press kit, 
and screenshots. And you know, a game with a really strong visual identity, such as Serial Cleaner, like I instantly want to know more about it. And like, I guess that's sort of part of it as well is like making sure your game is as like fun and unique as possible. But that's on you as creators, I guess. But like. Something like this, I would have missed it if the screenshots weren't in there, to be perfectly honest. I would have I'd browsed past it and missed a really cool game I've been playing for the last week. It's awesome. It's really cool. But, yeah, basically, you need to be as confident as possible in your game. When you email, don't email us saying that your game is X meets Y. If I receive one more email that says, hey, my game's Dark Souls meets, I don't know, like, Puzzle and Dragons or like something like that, it's going in the bin. I'm sick of Dark Souls, I'm sick of Puzzle and Dragons. What I actually want is for you to email me and say, hey, here's this thing that I spent a load of time making. I'm really proud of it. What do you think? And I want to then look at it. I want to play it and go, this game's like Puzzle and Dragons it means Dark Souls. And then I'll tell people about that. <laughs> you need to be confident enough in your game and really understand it and know that that's the sort of thing that you're riffing on so that I can then convey that to my audience. So for example, Virginia, which has obviously been a pretty huge success. Somebody told that, said that to me, they were like, hey dude, this game's like Twin Peaks and X-Files. I was like, no, I'm not interested. And I saw the art style and I was like, oh my god, this looks beautiful. Let's check it out. And to be honest, it's not really anything like Twin Peaks or X-Files. That does it a disservice because it's an entirely owned beast. And if that wasn't put upon it from the start, you know, we probably could have had more interesting write-ups about it. So don't push that on us, because really, you just need to create something that's unique and as awesome as you can make it. And then from there, the press will hopefully work its magic. Um, also know your target audience. This is an odd one, but don't take like little, like <coughs> endless runners to somewhere like Eurogamer or Games TM or Edge, because they're just not going to cover them. But take your walking sims, take really unique, cool experiences to those sort of outlets, but then maybe approach somewhere like Touch Arcade with an endless runner. Like know your audience, know which brands are gonna likely cover your game. Otherwise, again, it's just gonna get put in the trash can. That's what you don't want. And we just wanna be impressed. Like there are so many like unique creators out there that it's a shame when like cool games get missed. Um, it's actually like a real heartbreaking when we see a game break big that we missed because we haven't done our job properly. And all we really want to do is make sure that like the coolest games from the underground scene are being covered. So just make sure that's as front and center as possible. And um, I think there might be one more slide. No, that was it. I hope that was slightly useful. Um, and basically, like as I said at the start, I've, I've been a journalist for like. 10 years, I started off in games, then I moved to music, then I moved to comic books, then I moved to tech, then I moved to film, then I moved back to games. And basically all of these like really basic rules can be put on every single like creative interest out there. So even if you're like creating visual effects or like you're creating artwork and you want to get it in something like 3D artist, well, those same rules apply, like, you've just got to make sure that what you're creating is front and center in that email, because that's literally the first thing that we see, and it could also be the last thing that we see. So, really, it doesn't matter if you're making, like, a demo tape, and you're trying to get, you know, like, a music journalist to cover your band instead of Metallica, or if you're trying to get me to write about your game instead of writing about goddamn Call of Duty for the hundredth time. <laughs> Basically, you want to make sure that everything is as clear and concise as possible, and hopefully I will love it and not put it straight in the bin. Thank you very much for your time, everyone. As a journalist, uh, obviously you have a overflowing inbox of stuff and you're working through this, deleting the crap and focusing on yeah. the good stuff. Do you get to do any proactive, like, do you get to search for anything, or do you just process what comes to you? Um, for the most part, like I used to have a little bit more time because we have like a, so TM, we have a showcase spread. So every month I will actually spend some time looking for smaller projects to go in to showcase. Um, I know for web, they don't really have that luxury because obviously they're right for the news cycle, everything's sort of got to be immediate. We get the chance to, to sort of dig into that. Um, 
A lot of the time that will be me going through my emails. I'll have a look, see what's popular on Twitch, see if there's anything I missed. A lot of the time I'm going through emails and just being like, don't want to look at the Kickstarter, don't, well, oh, that one looks interesting though. Look into it. Do they have assets of, like available immediately? Because I have four hours to turn around a thousand words. Yes. Oh, good to go. If there's no assets, probably not going to cover it. So again, just like make, if I'm searching for something and I need it immediately, everything needs to be there ready to go. And that's sadly, that's not because I don't want to spend more time doing anything. It's just, that's what journalism's like. It's so busy nowadays. Like teams are a lot smaller than they used to be. The like news cycle online is so immediate. If you want to write about something, everything needs to be there. Just that's how the industry is nowadays. What's the most ridiculous bit of promotional tat you've been given? <laughs> most ridiculous bit of promotional tat I've ever been given. What if it uh, turns out to be one of ours. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. That'd be sad times, wouldn't it? Um, ridiculous good or ridiculous bad? Both. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I wasn't given this personally, but I'm, it's in the office. Um, we've got a GTA 4 bat and a Saints Row 2 dildo bat. Uh, <laughs> now, I got one of them as well. I had to dispose of the dildo bat at Christmas last year, and that was very uncomfortable because I got caught sneaking it to the dumpster. And I had it wrapped up in these towels, and I was like, oh, this would be fine. And the builders come over, they're like, dude, you can't put that in now. I'm like, I think I can do that. What's it? <laughs> I'm just going to go. Um, and the worst stuff, like, I can't so even. Like, the <laughs> <laughs> there was like, there was, a, I think it was top 11. They sent these Jose Mourinho t shirts which said, I'm the special one on them. I was like, come on, like, I don't want that. Um, and I can't remember what it was. It, it, this was for some, like, weird Japanese dating game, but they sent those nudie pens, which <laughs> were honestly the worst things I've ever received. Um, and also, I think for Dark Souls once, they literally just sent this, Dark Souls 3, just this wooden crate that had nothing in it. It was just like some straw and the game without a box and I was like, oh cool, is that like wine or something? That's the other thing. Journalists love drinking, that's not a myth, so like you don't want your tap, but if you want to take us out for a drink, that's fine. But yeah, like no wine, just straw, and I've got now a box on my desk that I can't get rid of. So I mean, that's awesome. Thanks, Namco. <laughs> There's a question uh, What's the best time to first contact you guys? Do you need playable demo or visuals? To be honest, um, visuals is fine. Like If you've got a playable demo, that'd be great. Um, the thing I will say is if you've got visuals, if you can find a way to basically make sure that you've got some screens in an email, um, and you've got, if you can, a set of GIF in there as well, just so I can see what it's looking like in action, that'd be perfect. Like we don't need a playable demo straight away. If your game looks cool, then just the thing, if we see something cool but it's not ready to write about immediately, we always remember it. Like I, I know that's sort of like a misconception that people think we just see something and forget about it. But like if you send us something that looks cool but it's not quite ready, we'll keep it on the back burner. Like I've got this huge I've got like a list of stuff that looks epic and I've got a list of like blacklist stuff that I'm never writing about again because people constantly, constantly message me over Twitter, like one guy stopped messaging me over Twitter and has now started looping me in with 1,348 other people on LinkedIn because apparently that's the better way for me to look at his puzzle game. Don't know. But no, as soon as you're ready to show it off, as soon as like you're happy with it, you're happy with the quality, then send it our way. As long as you're proud of it. Anyone else? What's your uh, biggest <laughs> Biggest missed regret, uh, as in like of stuff I could have done in the industry or in terms of games that I've missed. I tell you what, there was one, uh, Stardew Valley, just in terms of games I wish I'd caught ahead of time. Stardew Valley, which if any of you don't know, is basically the guy hated the new Harvest Moon games, which I also hate the new Harvest Moon. I love Friends of Mineral Town on GBA. That's like one of my, that's my jam. I love it. He hated the new one, so he's like, I've had enough of this. I'm working part-time in a theater. I'll just build the first Harvest Moon again. 
on PC. Do you know what? It's great. It's absolutely amazing. But when someone said, hey, dude, they're remaking Harvest Moon, I was like, nope. And I just was like, no, nah, I'm not interested. I'll, I'll just play Friends of Mineral Town. I found my GBA in the cupboard. And I came out, and it was, it was amazing. And it, I really regretted not writing about that. That was, that was, that was sad for me. Um, in terms of just industry stuff, uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had to apply for a US visa to like do work stuff. It takes forever. And uh, I have missed now three different opportunities to go and hang out with Cliff Bozinski. And that's just <laughs> literally heartbreaking. That is destroying me. One day. One day. We'll get there now. We'll get there We've now. got faith in you. I've got faith. <laughs> How does it work in regards to, is it easier to get a console title pitching the magnet as a PC thing? Um, to be honest, the weighting these days does tend to veer towards console, though mainly because I don't own a PC. Um, because the concept of putting any sort of graphics card into a machine just confuses literally the hell out of me. Um, but again, as long as it looks cool, like we we'll cover it. I think if it's coming out on multiple platforms and therefore like multiple people will be interested in it, great. However, that's not going to stop us covering something if it does like legitimately look really, really interesting. I'm trying to think of an example from recent times. Um, even just like. Even just stuff that's like single format to like PS4. Like I'm, I worked on X1 and X360 for two years, so like the thought of the concept of coming onto a multi format mag and actually having to write about PlayStation stuff was just like, oh. <laughs> PlayStation VR, no way. Uh, but you know, as long as the thing looks cool, we're right about it. It doesn't, it doesn't really matter what format it's on. I think the only thing is like the things that struggle is like if you're making your game Linux exclusive. All right, we might, we might have to have words about getting an extra coder in, but apart from that, yeah, anything goes really.